Max Verstappen makes a big admission regarding rumors of driving for Mercedes, George Russell gives his verdict on Mercedes' struggles, and the secret to how Fred has been able to change Ferrari's fortunes is revealed. Let's get straight into the latest F1 news. Sky Sports' David Croft believes that if Max Verstappen did make an unlikely move to Mercedes, it would be done on the knowledge of their 2026 power unit, which would be difficult to find out for anyone relative to their rivals. Mercedes team principal Toto Wolff has previously stated that Verstappen is the team's primary target to try and replace Lewis Hamilton at the end of the season, but the reigning world champion remains under contract at Red Bull until 2028. While Croft does not believe a move to the Silver Arrows is on the cards for Verstappen, the upcoming regulations reset in Formula One represents a chance for all the teams to bring themselves back to a level playing field with Red Bull come 2026. Mercedes made the most of that switch when the turbo-hybrid era began in 2014. At a time when some of their rivals built a powerful engine and others had reliability, Mercedes had both. With Red Bull producing their first-ever in-house engines in time for 2026 following their split from Honda, Sky's lead commentator explained that if the Dutchman were to leave, it would be for a compelling performance-related reason. I don't think Max Verstappen is going to go to Mercedes. Croft told a recent episode of the Sky Sports F1 podcast. I really don't see Max leaving unless, and here's the caveat, unless he knows, and how he knows, I don't know how anyone knows, that the Mercedes engine in 2026 is going to be like the Mercedes engine in 2014. If he knows that, then he's going to want to go, but otherwise, why give up a winning thing? You know, Red Bull is a winning thing at the moment, and there are no guarantees from the outside that Mercedes will be that in 2026. For Verstappen himself, he has maintained throughout the season he wants to remain in the fastest car possible, adding that he is not currently motivated by the desire to build a new project from scratch in the search for victories when he is currently at the top of the sport. Well, at the end of the day, these kinds of decisions are not made very easily, and I'm very happy with where I am, Verstappen told Sky Sports F1 when asked whether or not the departure of Adrian Newey might prompt him to leave Red Bull. I want to be in the fastest car. That's what I always said with the team. That's what we have at the moment. And that's what we try and have also next year. I don't necessarily have a desire to suddenly build up something new or whatever, because why would you want to leave when you are already in the best position and you think you can continue that for a long time? George Russell believes upcoming Mercedes updates won't transform his team's fortunes in the short term. With Mercedes currently unable to join in the fight for victories or even podiums in Formula One, George Russell believes that the situation isn't going to change in the near future, despite the introduction of upgrades. Speaking after the Miami Grand Prix, which was won by McLaren, a Mercedes engine customer, Russell paid tribute to his friend and compatriot Lando Norris as the British driver clocked his first F1 victory. It's always great to see somebody get that chance to score a victory, Lando is deserving of that, he said. With McLaren coming on in leaps and bounds through a series of upgrades, starting at last year's Austrian Grand Prix, Russell said the Woking-based team has nailed its development path. McLaren qualified P17 and P18 12 months ago in Miami, and today they won, he said. So it shows what's possible when you get things right. But right now, we don't have things right, and we need to make changes quick. Mercedes introduced several new parts at the Miami Grand Prix, including a revised floor along with tweaks to the front wing and suspension, but more comprehensive upgrades are expected through the summer. But despite these upgrades on the way for the W15, Russell said he doesn't expect their impact to vault Mercedes forward into race challengers. We do have a few things coming in the short term, but nothing that is going to transform us into race winners right now, he said. I think we have to accept that we are the fourth fastest team at the moment. The lap times and the championship don't lie. This is where we are, and I think we're fighting for the P5, P8 region week in, week out now. Asked for the specifics of the timeline as to when the upgrades for the W15 will be introduced, team boss Toto Wolff said they are still a few races away and opted against putting a firm date on their introduction. I think we know what we do, and in terms of what you're bringing to the car, you can't really rush it, he said because you've got to get to the point where you can say now it's good to be released into production. And once that part comes, or once it's coming, they need to be sorted. So this is a matter of many weeks.
Writing in his post-race column for Sky F1, commentator Martin Brundle said that the upgrades could make or break the rest of Mercedes' season as he labeled the pace of the W15 as confusing. The Mercedes had good speed in the closing stages, but once again both Lewis Hamilton and George Russell had a weekend of confusing and highly variable pace, he said. Mercedes have some upgrades coming which will define the rest of their season and maybe even 2025 and demonstrate whether or not they can define and fix what is wrong with the car. Here's hoping they do because the upgraded McLaren looks to be closer to Red Bull and Ferrari is eagerly looking forward to their imminent upgrades too. And if you are enjoying the video, drop a like and subscribe to the channel for daily F1 content. Piastri had the better start of the two McLaren drivers in Miami, muscling his way past Norris, Carlos Sainz, and Sergio Perez after the latter went straight on in the first corner. In a McLaren that didn't receive all the upgrades that Norris's MCL38 had equipped, Piastri nevertheless showed great pace early on and passed the Ferrari of Charles Leclerc to move up to second behind Max Verstappen. But it was Norris who vaulted to the top after delaying his only pit stop until a mid-race safety car gave the Briton a free stop, with Norris controlling the race from the restart to take an emphatic maiden win. In the fight for fourth, Sainz was penalized for contact with Piastri, which forced the Australian to pit for a new front wing and left him down in 13th at the finish. But while his race ended in disaster, Stella believes Piastri will take courage from his performance alongside Norris last weekend in a less rapid McLaren ahead of receiving the same specification as Norris in Imola. I think Oscar comes out of this weekend even more conscious of his strengths as a driver, Stella said. We knew already how fast he is on a single lap, considering that he didn't have the full package. Let me pay proper credit to Oscar. The gap he had to Lando in qualifying is smaller than the difference of the package he had. So, he was really pulling off a strong performance over a single lap in very difficult conditions like all drivers said with the soft tires, Stella added. His performance in the race was again very strong. Lando said something really nice before. He said by looking at Oscar overtaking a Ferrari, he felt, wow, we are actually there today. So it was a realization for Lando himself. He comes away from this weekend with this sort of conviction, especially in terms of race pace, which is something we wanted to improve having looked at Japan, having looked at China. So for me, he's in a very strong place. Stella also praised Piastri for not kicking up a fuss when told Norris would get priority on the full upgrade package, which also included a revised floor and side pods. He has proven once again how strong a team player he is because clearly when I told him, Oscar, we are going to give the side pods and the floor to Lando. He wasn't the happiest in the bottom of his heart, Stella said. But at no point did he make this decision difficult or ask why. He understood the reasoning and he was immediately supportive, like all the entourage around Oscar. RB team principal Laurent Mekis said the improved performance of Daniel Ricciardo will have lifted a huge weight in Miami, but the team is still unsure what was disturbing his performances before that weekend. Ricardo put in a much improved showing during sprint qualifying, in particular in Miami last weekend, qualifying and finishing fourth before tailing off in the race, scoring his first points of the season in the process. Mechias was full of praise for how Ricciardo handled his performance in the first part of the weekend, before clarifying that the new chassis given to him in China, in the hope of it being better suited to him, was always in the team's plan. Having shown glimpses of improvements before that weekend anyway, Makis explained that Ricciardo's performances have been very difficult to explain, given the nature of his results, but the signs have been there from within that a strong result was on its way. I'm sure it was a huge weight off his shoulders because the U.S. is nearly his second home race, Makis said to Motorsport.com. He did it in style with an incredible defense to Carlos Sainz and the McLaren of Oscar Piastri. It was a fantastic moment for him. In fairness, we had seen signs of improvement before, but it was very difficult to explain it to the world. Saudi was a better performance than Bahrain, Australia was better than Saudi, Japan was better than Australia, and China was better than Japan. It had been coming in many, many small steps, and we think there are more steps we can take in the next few races to help suit the car better to him. On the possibility of there being a definite reason for why Ricardo struggled during the race, Makis replied, Let's just say that we identified stuff he was not happy with and took away quite a lot of the speed. 
We have tried to tick all the boxes to erase these limitations, and there are a few more we would like to see ticked over the next few weekends. It was always planned to introduce a new chassis before race six. It was a nice box to tick on our issues with Daniel to make him more comfortable, and he did better straight away in China and Miami. It's a big value for a team to be able to understand and analyze what is happening with the drivers, and it's not always visible on the data. We are still trying to understand what it is that was disturbing him before, and it's a work in progress. For Ricciardo himself, he voiced his frustration at going out in Q1 on Saturday after such a strong outing in the sprint in Miami, which he felt played its part in how he was not able to add to his points tally for the weekend. As a result, he believes his one-lap pace needs to improve if he is to keep up his stronger showings of late. Coming into a race, I'm always hopeful and optimistic and excited, but I think we're quickly met with the reality that it's not the same when we're in traffic, Ricardo told media after the race in Miami. We see yesterday in the sprint, I was able to use the pace and have a clear track and just use the downforce and the grip of the car. But today in these battles and with dirty air, we struggle, and I think a lot of the cars we raced had lower downforce, so to try to attack and defend was simply just not a straightforward one for us. So it just goes back to qualifying. It's so important. Obviously yesterday I was upset with the grip I had on that set of tires, and obviously I still feel that way. But also, I have to always look at myself as well. And I was like, yeah, I could have still done a little bit better here and there. So I still hold myself accountable for the sessions like that. We just know we're quick, but we're not quick enough to start at the back and chop through the field. We're just simply not, so we've got to qualify better. Fred Vasseur was asked if his apparent friendlier demeanor compared to his fellow team principals has had an impact on helping bring people to Ferrari moving forward. While he did not feel in too much of a position to comment on that assertion, he explained that the Scuderia remains very much on a recruitment drive as they look for their first world championship since the 2008 Constructors title. Ferrari boss was asked about management style role in Scuderia recruitment drive. Vasseur is well known in his interviews for letting out a laugh or two on occasion and has been praised for his management style beforehand, with Lewis Hamilton having remained close to him since their partnership through Art Grand Prix in his junior career, which will resume at Ferrari next season. While every manager has their style and way of working, Vasseur explained that he does not want to fight with my colleagues as a way of trying to operate a team and it was put to him over the weekend that this might have a role in the success he has had in recruiting high-profile names in his time as team principal so far. When asked about his management style compared to his rival team principals in Miami and whether or not that will help him bring success when Hamilton arrives at the team next season, Vasseur replied with a laugh, You have to ask the question to the people of the company if the management is friendly or not. But no, I don't want to lose energy for the wrong topic. I think we have a lot to do internally. We have to improve, we have to recruit, we have to develop the car, we have a huge amount of work on the table, and I don't want to lose my energy, my time, or my budget to fight with my colleagues. That is not my approach at all. In addition, when it was put to him that staff from Mercedes were reported to be interviewing for positions with the Scuderia moving forward, he responded with another big laugh. A lot of people from all the teams are doing a lot of interviews in Marinello including Mercedes. Adrian Newey's name has been repeatedly linked with Ferrari since the announcement he would be leaving Red Bull, but Vasseur would not be goaded into an answer as to whether or not he would be approaching the design great. Moreover, when asked even theoretically what he would bring to any team on the grid, the Ferrari team boss would not be moved. He replied, Theoretically, no. I have no answer to do on this because I know that you will be able to write pages on the two words that I could say there. Check out this video next to understand why Red Bull is scared of Ferrari's latest upgrades. See you there.